All right. Good morning, everyone. My name is Emma, and I am the YES program coordinator at Iron USA. Welcome to the YES Social Media for Social Good webinar. Today's, so, uh, today's webinar is all about social media, something that I'm sure each and every one of you are using every day or pretty close to it. Even if you yourself aren't an active Facebooker, Instagram, Twitter, blogger, blogger um, or anything else, many parts of your lives are impacted by social media, whether it be the, by, by the products you buy, the language you use, or the topics of conversations that work their way into your daily life. Social media has done wonders in making our world more connected and sharing and disseminating information. And we can keep the momentum going and truly use social media for social good to have a big impact on each of our respective societies. Uh, so before we begin, let's go over a quick review of some of the features in this room so all attendees can navigate and participate seamlessly. So let's review the chat box settings. You can see this on the welcome screen. Um, you should make your settings be set to all panelists and attendees. Um, so that way everyone can see the questions or the, the um, chatter that might be happening among you. So let's do our first poll. So let's launch, who are you? So you're gonna see a poll come up onto your screen and we would love it if you all could answer this. Tell us who you are. Are you a YES alumni? Are you a YES on program student? A YES abroad alumni or student? YES staff or someone else? So we'll just let those answers come on in. And just so you know, throughout our webinar, we will be putting up polls on the screen to just get to know you a little more and make sure that we are keeping you all engaged and getting your feedback throughout the webinar. I also want to let you all know that we are on Facebook Live. So for those of you joining us through our Facebook Live, feel free to add your comments and questions as there as well, and we will go through and make sure that we answer them during our webinar. Finally, we are recording this webinar, so if you missed something or if you just want to watch it again because it's so awesome, you can visit yesprograms.org or our YouTube page to watch it again. All right, so let's see if we can get those poll results up so we can know who's in the room with us. All right, so we have YES alumni, 20%, um, YES staff, 45 and other 35%. So welcome, everyone. So we were inspired to host a webinar on using social media for social good because of the prevalence of social media in our society, especially among young people. Uh, a number of you have reported using social media to promote your own projects or to share about your life when you're living abroad, whether it be abroad in the US or abroad in other places. So let's see right now who has used social media to promote their project. Let's get our poll number two up on the screen. So have you used social media to promote a project or create a social good campaign? Yes, no, or not yet, but I plan to. Let's see how many people in the room have experienced this. And I see more and more people are still coming in. This is great. Um, and in the meantime, if you have done a project that use social media, please feel free to write a, a description of it um, in the chat box to share your work with others. <clears throat> Let's maybe get those results up on the screen. Awesome, wow, 78% said yes, they've used um, social media to promote a campaign, um, and 22% say not yet, but they plan to. That's amazing. So you know, 78% said you do use social media to promote your own projects. We still aren't quite at that 100% mark, but that's okay because this webinar is going to teach you the skills to effectively use social media to bring your projects into people's daily conversations and work towards a positive change. So no matter where your starting point is, this social media for social good webinar is for you. Um, and this webinar is really timely as we're wrapping up International Education Week. We know a lot of YES on program students have been sharing what IEW means to them, and we have loved seeing the inbound posts from all across America and the world. But we also want to make sure that our YES alumni and YES abroad students who maybe aren't in a classroom right now can still celebrate the successes of IEW. And we think one of the great ways to do that is through social media, to harness that power and share about other cultures and create awareness about similar similarities and celebrate differences. 
Um, and I see that we already have some comments in here. Hassan from Pakistan is saying that um, Pakistani alumni are using social media to engage in community service, as well as Bill's positive hype related to their activities. That's amazing, and hopefully all the Pakistanis in the room will be able to take away some new strategies today. Um, so let's do one more poll, and then I'm gonna introduce you to our phenomenal guest speaker. So let's put up here um, poll number three, which is about obstacles. We wanna know what kind of obstacles you see when you're working with social media. So if you haven't used social media for social good, what has been holding you back? Is it because you don't have access to the internet or the appropriate technology? Maybe you, you can't think of creative ways, or you're intimidated and unsure of where to start, or anything else. And if you do click other, please feel free to add in your comments into the chat box. Thank you for sharing that, Hassan. We love it when we, um, we have this really great um, comments in our chat box. It's how we all learn from one another. Okay, let's give it a couple more seconds. Again, you're talking about, you're figuring out the biggest obstacles and using social media. All right, I think we can go ahead and share it. Can't think of creative ways, say 50% of the people um, are intimidated and unsure of where to start. And 10% said other. So if you're in that 10%, please do feel free to chat that into the chat box. All right, so without further ado, I'm gonna let the social media expert come on here. Um, we're so pleased to introduce you to our panelist, David Amani, who is the Assistant Manager for Marketing and Communications at the Ad Council. The Ad Council is the largest producer of public service advertisements. They create campaigns through different communication methods, such as social media, in order to increase awareness of public issues and have a measurable impact on society. Ad Council produces service announcements sponsored by both nonprofits and federal government agencies. You may have heard of some of their more famous campaigns like Smokey the Bear or Promotion for the Peace Corps or USAID. Um, David does PR and social media at the Ad Council for some really, really exciting projects that are having a huge and positive impact in society. Online and in real life, David loves a great story, especially when it has a great purpose. At the Ad Council, he tells the stories of the nation's largest social good campaigns through, public, through social media and public relations. Before that, he ran social media channels for Broadway shows and live experiences. And even before that, he studied public relations at Boston University. Throughout it, he, is, he loves helping nonprofits and art organizations find their story and tell it in a powerful way. He also loves singing and is always singing. So David, let's bring you on camera and we'll let you take it away. Hello everybody. <clears throat> so excited to be here. Um, I love reading through these comments. Hassan, you are a champ already. <laughs> um, so I'm just gonna go through a bunch of stuff that I find very fun. I thought it was really interesting um, seeing that how many people are like stumped on creative ideas. That's not bad, that's totally normal. Um, that's probably because you actually care about what you're doing. Um, and how many of you are intimidated because that's also normal. It's a big crazy world out there and it's hard to um, approach how we can make a change, but that's why it's so important that we are making a change. So hopefully this will inspire you. Ask all the questions you want in the world. Let me get the screen share up. Um, just one second. Also, apologies if any email notifications come through. Um, I can't figure out how to turn those off. <laughs> okay, now that everyone can see my screen, let me pull up the chat really fast so I can see what you're saying. Great, okay. Um, wait one second, I didn't get it. There we go, okay. Hi again, everyone. So, social media for social good. My favorite subject, so excited to dive in. Um, so what are we even talking about today? First, I just wanted to let you know who I am, um, but thanks for the great intro, Emma. Um, I want to talk about why is, like, social media can be so important, and I'm sure these are all things that you already know because you're here on this webinar. Um, how to leverage social media for yourself. Um, 
a lot of lessons that I'm trying to take into consideration for myself as well. Uh, the most important, which is shifting from awareness into action. Um, and then a few things on my mind for what tomorrow holds and then a bigger time for questions, but truly like chat any questions throughout. Um, I'll pay attention to the chat thing as much as I can, but I tend to be a little bit of a steamroller. So just chat me a million times if you don't get my attention the first time. Um, so hello, I'm David. I was born and raised in California. I'm here in freezing cold New York right now. Um, I'm half European Mutt and half Iranian, but I only know two sentences in Farsi. Um, I'm trying to learn more, but it's very difficult. Um, I went to college in Boston to study public relations and a hot second in theater. Um, but then I moved to New York to work um, on the advertising side of Broadway shows, and now I work in social good. Um, we'll hear about that trajectory in a minute. I'm learning how to do trapeze, and I'm also unlearning how to apologize because I apologize constantly. So if you hear me apologize, chat me and say stop. Um, so what was my path? Let's start from the bottom up. When I'm always volunteering, I'm always working pro bono. I think that's one of the most exciting things um, about having digital superpowers, I like to call them, is that there are so many ways we can use them on big scales and little teeny tiny scales. And so I love to do that. <clears throat> I started as an intern at this little teeny arts organization. And from there, I went to intern at a um, PR firm where I did a lot of media relations. Um, and then I did corporate social responsibility as an intern at Edelman, where I actually helped write a um, speech on the state of CSR in India, which was truly fascinating and incredible. Um, I was very involved in the Public Relations Student Society of America chapter at BU, um, where I met a ton of incredible people. And then I was a marketing intern at um, a regional theater, which kind of led to me working on Broadway as a community manager, which you'll see a lot of examples from. And now I'm here at the Ad Council on the marketing communications team. So <clears throat> a little bit more about the Ad Council. Um, we are a nonprofit organization. Uh, and as Emma said, we bring together the most creative minds in advertising, media, and tech to address the most worthy causes. We're really focused on the US because we originally actually were a government agency. Um, and that shifted early on in our life of an organization. But really since the beginning, oh, what part of India? It was actually about um, the state of corporate social responsibility in all of India. Uh, so not one specific state, but more a kind of holistic evaluation of what the trends are, where the opportunities are, um, who's doing great, who's not doing so great. And I learned a lot, um, really awesome. And so the Ad Council. So really since the beginning of our founding, um, we've been creating slogans and icons and messages that really have woven into the fabric of American culture, which is kind of crazy to think about. Um, I'm sure you've heard of Smokey Bear, Only You Can Prevent Wildfires. He's turning 75 next year. Um, he's uh, the longest running um, public service announcement campaign in history. And stay tuned because the 75th year is gonna be lit, as we like to say. Um, you might have heard of the campaign Friends Don't Let Friends Drive Drunk. That's, uh, we are also still working um, on now buzzed driving. Um, yay, Gloria, so excited to hear that. And then some more recent campaigns are things like Love Has No Labels, which is our diversity and inclusion campaign. We actually just launched um, our first short film. Yes, or I can't even remember what day it is, on Tuesday, um, which is really exciting to see kind of the intersection of entertainment and social good, especially as someone who comes from the world of entertainment. And a very recent campaign called End Family Fire, which is really focused on the concept of like, safe gun storage um, because eight kids a day are accidentally killed or injured by a gun in their home. Um, and so as the Ad Council, we are completely nonpartisan and we really look to find essentially the best ways to help America through messaging. Um, so what's some of my favorite work at the Ad Council? Um, since I work on the social team, I, I think you can see my mouse, right? I love making fun social content. Um, this is one of my favorite posts we did for Smokey Bear. 
Uh, okay, great. Good to hear you can see my mouse. Um, I'm sure many of you have seen Star Wars. Um, Smokey Bear's tagline is only you. Star Wars' tagline is may the force be with you. And so we combine the two and say, may the fourth be with only you. This is one of my favorite social graphics. Fans loved it. Um, I also used to work on a uh, forest conservation campaign called Discover the Forest, which aims to get kids outdoors because if kids have a relationship with nature, they're more likely to be stewards of that nature. And so we make some beautiful social content to get kids and families engaged. And this is one of my favorites. Um, if you've been to a national forest here, you've seen these signs welcome you to this like style of sign, welcome you into the forest. And so we took those and made them into inspirational quotes. And I cry when I hear about these. Um, I also do a lot of media relations um, and earn media. And this is a screenshot from a huge media tour we did with FEMA for our emergency preparedness campaign uh, that we kicked off or uh, at the end of the summer. And this cat photo, if you look very closely, there's real cats there. We did, for our shelter pet adoption campaign, we did a partnership with Cats on Broadway um, where we had cats taking pictures with cats. So it was a blast. Um, these are also some of my favorite um, TV spots we've made, which do end up on social often. So it's really exciting to have a nice part to play in these the creation of these. I'm gonna play one um, that I think is just so funny and it's for our Meals on Wheels campaign. And it shows the relationship between the volunteers and the seniors that they serve in such a positive and exciting light. Um, and so I'm just gonna play it really fast. You should be able to hear the sound. I try to keep up with what these young people is, is doing and knowing. I was at work and I was I just got a text from a number that I didn't know. I sent him a text. He texts me back and say, who this? <laughs> and I just thought that was the funniest thing. The next few weeks, she just made fun of me, like would answer the door and say, who this? Who this? Drop off a warm meal and get more than you expect. Volunteer at AmericaLet'sDoLunch.org. America. Let's do I am obsessed with everyone in that video. They're the most wonderful people. And yes, I can happily share all these links. I can probably even share this deck so you have it. Um, yes, thank you, Gloria. Um, okay, so I could watch all of these all day, but I'll keep pushing on. If we have a little time at the end, we can have a little viewing party. Um, okay, moving on. So what do I do at the Ad Council? What does marketing communications mean? Yes, you can definitely volunteer. I'm gonna slack the link right now. Let's do lunch.org. If you go to America, let's do lunch.org, you can find um, your nearest um, Meals on Wheels program where you can deliver a warm meal and a hello to a senior in your neighborhood. And actually there's Meals on Wheels chapters all around the world. Um, so for those of you not in the US, there's probably a way you can volunteer for Meals on Meals in um, your country as well. So what I do at the Ad Council, again, I'm on the marketing communications team, but what that means is that um, our team runs all the public relations and social media extensions of our campaigns. Um, so to get into the nitty gritty, we have our campaign development team, which works with our pro bono ad agencies to make these ads. And the research team and the analytics team and the media teams all really work to get these ads out into the world. And then our team, is a piece of that giant wheel where we get the world essentially talking about these issues in their daily lives through earned media and social media. And so I figured I'd show you what I do all through the lens of Smokey Bear. Um, so here you see Smokey Bear on the red carpet. I've been on countless red carpets in my life and I can tell you I've never gotten to be on one with Smokey Bear until recently and it was a blast. So that's really an earned media thing because you'll see these are all reporters, um, and um, who are interviewing the forest ranger about the importance of wildfire prevention. And those are all gonna end up as stories and earn media that we didn't pay for. Um, and then here's me with Smokey Bear taking, I've never taken a selfie with anyone on the red carpet, but I had to make an exception um, for Smokey Bear. Um, and then I think here's a good example of the social media extension. So in social media, it's so important that we get the content that like really makes our audience excited. Um, 
And this was an example of that. You have all these icons kind of like rallying behind Smokey Bear. And people love icons. Um, they have an emotional connection with them. And I think this was a really fun moment for Smokey fans and Ad Council fans and Social Good fans to see like such a fun community of icons, which is like the weirdest sentence I've probably ever said. Um, and you'll also see a fun little photo bomb by some of our other campaigns, um, Vince and Larry the Crash Test Dummies. Okay, so what are some ways that I've used social media in this job and my last job? We're gonna go through a few examples and again, continue chatting questions through. Um, love to talk about all this stuff. So one is, I worked on a Broadway show called Dear Evan Hansen, um, which started as a little teeny show in Washington, D.C., and per the trajectory of a lot of Broadway shows, it starts in, um, at a regional theater, and then it goes sometimes to an off-Broadway theater, which is just a smaller theater in New York, and then it transfers to Broadway. Um, we were so lucky as Dear Evan Hansen to have like, an awesome group of fans from the beginning, and part of the reason is because we really, like, we loved that group of fans. Um, and so by the time that our cast album um, was dropping, uh, when the show was on Broadway, we had a lot of people who cared about this show um, who probably would never be able to make it to New York to see this show. And that's where social media came in. And that's why I was so lucky to be the community manager on this show, because I got to have the relationship with these people around the world who cared about the message um, of this show. And so when the cast album was releasing, we wanted to invite them all to join us as we listened to it for the very first time in the world. And so we actually hosted a digital listening party um, through Facebook Live. Um, and it was one of the most inspirational moments of my life. It was midnight New York time so that a lot of people around the world could uh, access it. and 16,000 fans joined in and are chatting in the comments as the music is playing. We had the um, Pasek and Paul, the composers, and Alex Lackamore, the music director, record you can kind of see in this screenshot, um, give like interesting tidbits and um, insights to the lyrics and the process. And those came up as cards throughout the album. Um, and it was incredible. And I think this is just an example of like, social media is a really accessible place for people. And so we have a huge responsibility of social media mavens um, to make sure that we are constantly extending to everyone we can. Yeah, and I wanna jump in here and just remind alumni of how relevant this is because you all are in countries all around the world and you don't have a lot of times access to physically be in those spaces. But that doesn't mean that you can't create an online community of support and build momentum for a similar cause that you all are working towards. And David, I was wondering if maybe you could talk about a little bit the advertisement that you did to, to gain awareness about um, the digital listening party. Um, what advertisements we did to promote the digital listening party? Oh, perfect. Yeah, so that was really focused on our biggest fans. And so we posted a lot about it on social media. Of course, we ran some Facebook ads um, just to make sure that everyone saw it. Because as you know, with the Facebook algorithm, it's really difficult to make sure everyone's seeing everything all the time. And we had a very important piece was having the cast talk about it because their voices are so important and so trusted that when the cast was talking about it, people really listen. And then we also had um, significant press like announcing it on the day of the release. So in the morning when it was going live at midnight, we had a press release go out so that different Broadway publications and entertainment publications um, were letting everyone know that at midnight, if they go on to Facebook Live at this link, they'll be able to listen to the um, cast recording for the very first time. Awesome. Yeah. And glad my email notifications aren't showing up for everyone. Don't want to stress everyone out. <laughs> Okay, so another really fun thing I got to do, um, this was not part of any job I worked. This was one of my uh, pro bono things that I do on the side. Uh, some friends of mine were producing a weird musical that I love so much. Um, we called it A Fairy Tale Derailed. Um, 
And we needed to promote it. New York City is a very loud, large, huge place with a million shows going on at all times. And how are we going to break through with, oh, right, zero dollars? Um, and so we were thinking, thinking, thinking. And finally, I said, you know what? Why don't we just write a bunch of derailed fairy tales, post them in the subway stations, all that lead to our theater, and not tell anyone what they are, but just put in the hashtag Scorched, which was the name of the show. Um, so it cost $100 to print everything. And we just posted hundreds of these derailed fairy tales all around subways in New York. And so these are some screenshots of totally random people just posting these stories. And then from there, we were following hashtag Scorched. So we would reply to them. And you can see here, we would reply saying, you found us. Um, and then we would DM them and say, like, come join us. Here's a link to tickets. Um, and we actually got, like, a lot of really awesome people to come to the show that way. And, of course, no one's going to come to a show alone. So they all brought friends. And then they brought more friends the next night. Um, so social media, yes, can cost millions and billions of dollars. And often it does. But social media can also cost $100. I really think it's all about um, – the idea. Oh, wait, I forgot the Hansel and Gretel story. Hansel and Gretel came upon a gingerbread house that looked delicious. Awesome. <laughs> I forgot about these stories. They're so funny. Um, and that's the other nice thing about working on a team is that everyone can brainstorm together. And so I came up with this idea, but all of us um, work together to write the stories. Um, so it was a really fun process. Okay, here's another one of my favorites. So this is what I call a thousand replies. Going back to the show, Dear Evan Hansen, um, and really focusing on what I mentioned earlier about loving your core audience. Um, we just have to keep in mind as social people that our core audience are the people who love us the most. And we have to treat them like real human beings and show them how much we love them. Because if that core audience feels loved, similar to the um, fairy tales derailed, when they come, they're going to bring friends and then they're going to bring more friends. And if we treat our core with like love and respect and excitement, they tell their friends who then bring their friends into the fold, who bring other friends into the fold, who bring their family into the fold, who bring the random person they met on the subway into the fold. And we continue to build that core audience. Um, so one of the ways we did that, oh, go ahead. Oh, hi. Um, so one of the ways we did that for Dear Evan Hansen is we were announcing or it was early in the Broadway run. We wanted to get people excited. Um, we had a new song releasing before the cast album dropped. And we decided, you know what, we're going to give this as an exclusive to our fans. Um, and so we pulled a thousand tweets, recent tweets from, yes, celebrities and influencers, but majority of the tweets were from just fans all around the world. And we replied to their latest tweet with an exclusive download link. You can see it um, here. And we just said, like, Fun stuff. Like one of my favorites is our reply to this one lady and her cat. Um, here. We, we said, Rebecca, we have a we think you and your cat will truly enjoy. And then we gave her the download link and she freaked out. Um, and like truly the tears, the excitement, the smiles, the press hits, um, the mentions were in insane and really it's because we just showed our core we're obsessed with you and thanks for being there for us so that was a blast another important thing to keep in mind is that often we're doing social media as a piece of something larger or something bigger and it's really important to find exciting ways to leverage what's already happening i'm sure lots of you are working on programs and projects that are ongoing um, and so finding the social media extensions of those is really important. And I think you can always go back to like, what does my core audience love and what do they want to hear? Um, oh, I'll send you everything about Dear Evan Hansen. Um, it's a great musical. Anyway, um, so here's something we did with NBC Universal for their upfronts. And so upfronts are an industry, like series of events where um, networks and, um, big outlets now, um, digital outlets, will present their upcoming programming to advertisers so that they can plan what their media buys are gonna be. Um, and it's a pretty inside baseball focused event traditionally, but NBC Universal 
wanted to make it a little bit more fan friendly. And there were all these stars coming to the upfronts anyway. And so they brought us on at my last job to just really um, capitalize on that existing content. Um, and so we created the social lounge. And on social, another thing we have to remember is that we have to give people something to talk about or why would they talk? Um, so here we had this lounge where we had a TV studio where we had a host doing all these different games. And this was the like content booth. And so we had this little light and we had phones and people could record boomerangs. They could do quick videos to their fans. They could do lip sync battles, um, just like fun stuff. And then we had a photo studio where the celebrities could take all these fun photos with confetti. Um, and it resulted in 800 mentions an hour throughout the day um, and tons of content throughout the months. So it's really important to just always remember like, okay, what is the piece of this thing that's already happening that my fans will care about? Yeah, and I wanted to jump in here again really quickly and encourage YES alumni and on program students to think about when they are doing their projects, what can they put on social media that, that followers will want to see, right? And David, I know in previous conversations, you talked about the importance of just captioning all of that content throughout the whole entire project so that we, we have the, um, when the time comes, we can put that online and sort of show and, and start that conversation about this is what we were doing and, and get more and more people engaged. That you can draw those in to your social media plan and strategy. Yes, 2000%. Thank you for that, Emma. I think it's really important also to remember that fans see what we see in the way that we present it. And so let's say you're working on something that isn't public yet. Capture the content as if you're posting it live, get the fun boomerangs, capture the energy of that moment. And then when your program is ready to be communicated to the public, whether that's two days or two months or two years later, you can then roll all that content out and it keeps that energy from the moment initially. Mm -hmm. So always be capturing, always be capturing. The majority of the memory on my phone is just thousands of photos from things I've been to, um, just in case the brand ever needs to post it later. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so always be capturing. Um, okay, so another really exciting piece of working in social is creating just beautiful content. And this content should have a purpose, especially for those of us, um, I think all of us here are pretty like-minded in the fact that we really want to have an impact on the world and see where we can have an impact on the world. And so we might as well create content with a purpose. Um, but it's also important to remember that just making the thing isn't enough. We have to make sure it fits in each channel. So this is an example of a beautiful video that we did for our Meals on Wheels campaign um, with the New York Times content studio, T Brand, um, following the parallel days of a volunteer and a senior, and then where they intersect when the volunteer delivers the meal. Um, and yes, we made a gorgeous um, film but we needed to extend it into social media. And so we actually made um, vertical videos for Instagram stories where the two videos ran on top of each other. And these were extremely engaging. We made square videos, we put captions so that wherever this content was, it felt natural in the like context of where it was. And it didn't feel like it was just kind of thrown as a media placement. Um, so let's take, I think this is just a minute long and it's, I think you're gonna love it as much as I do. So we'll watch it really quick. Oh no. I'm sorry, everyone. Oh, we can, um, why don't we chat the link and, or do you want to try it one more, try time? one more time? There we go. Yes, 
you know, girls got like now how. If I keep low, then I call Mojo. Get the latest project for the promo. <laughs> Hey, man. How you doing, Mr. Rudy? Shopping. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. How you been? Uh, okay. <laughs> you got to kiss the face. Yeah. What kind of things that, you know, have, have you learned, you know, your work as postal service that kept you going? You know what that takes to be a postman? You got to love the people. Right. To me, Meals on Wheels is the most wonderful thing. You guys coming in and I see you and you talk to me for a few words and all that. I think that's great. That's the food of life. <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. Um, uh, I love this video. And again, I just want to draw a parallel for our YES alumni that this video is raising awareness about an issue in the U.S., but it's also a call for action, right? They're trying to get volunteers to come and work with this, um, with Meals on Wheels. So think of how you all in your alumni projects that you do, that you do can try to not just raise awareness for a cause, but also recruit people to be involved in your cause through social media. Yes, got to call the people to action. Um, okay, so what I learned from all this, I'm also realizing I have so much left to cover and it's already 940, so I'm gonna start speeding through. Um, so really quick, some lessons from these past campaigns and a lot of other work I've done. One, there's space for social impact in everything. We might not always be working on a cause or a um, nonprofit or a um, campaign to get people to do something better in the world, but we can always make the world a better place. Um, even in the sense of casting, making sure we're bringing diverse people in, in front of the camera. If we're hiring people, making sure we're bringing diverse people behind the camera in your work as a community manager, making sure that the voices you're retweeting and amplifying and engaging with represent a broad spectrum of people. In, um, there's just like so many examples of how we can just always make sure that inclusion and social impact is part of everything we do. Um, whether that's when you're ordering food for a meeting and you just make sure you order enough for the meeting and so there won't be a ton of leftovers that go to waste. Like there are little teeny things that we can integrate through our entire lives um, to make sure that we're always doing social impact. And I think all of us here know this, but our work is so much more than our job. Um, we spend a lot of hours at our desks every day and if we're not finding a, a deeper cause for that, no matter what it is, um, then, really what are we doing um i remember when i was working at pinkberry in college i found a cause in that because people's lives are stressful and they came into pinkberry and it made their day completely better uh, because we just talked about how much they loved kiwi on their vanilla yogurt and that's important oh yes pinkberry has a delicious frozen yogurt in the u.s so good i'm also obsessed with frozen yogurt um thank you gloria also important, agility is the greatest ability. Social media changes literally on the hour and no one tells you and then all of a sudden you have to do things completely differently and that is what makes this so much fun. Um, so always, yes, Signet, Pinkberry does truly equal joy. <laughs> um, so yes, always be looking for ways to make sure that you're staying on top of the trend and you might have to pivot and that's awesome. And bring your passions into play um, no matter what you're doing. Um, find a way to really bring what you love into it and people will always be able to tell. Um, so now let's talk through a few ways social media can be so important. One, it gives us access to participate in the conversation. Um, two, it allows us to listen more than we talk. Um, and three, it allows us to iterate and optimize. And of course there's like literally countless ways, um, Social media can be important, but these are the three that speak to me the most. Um, so participating in the conversation, what are some like tangible ways we can do that? Because I think we hear this a lot, like participate, converse, like all this stuff. Um, the beauty about social media is you can 
engage with keywords. So I pulled four keywords as an example for Smokey Bear. Um, and yes, if you're working on a larger account or campaign or client, you probably have access to programs like Sprout Social or um, Sprinkler that aggregate this for you. But I wanted to pull this straight from Twitter to show you that even if you're working on the smallest, most low budget, budget project, you can still use these tactics. And so here's four keywords I pulled for Smokey Bear. One is our actual name, Smokey Bear. And so if you, it's pretty small here, but when you zoom in, you, can, you just wanna make sure you're keeping tabs on what are people saying so that if someone's saying something great, like, oh my God, just saw Smokey Bear today, he's my favorite, you reply to that, you retweet it, you thank them, you show them that you are listening and you're there and you're an active member of this community. Um, you also want to make sure you're following the hashtags you use all the time. Um, so Smokey Bear's hashtag or his main hashtag is hashtag only you. And as we can see, of course, there's stuff about a fire. Oh no, this is actually one of our old PSAs, so that's exciting. We're seeing this um, organization posting our PSAs. Um, it looks like we have someone talking about Smokey Bear. And then there's also going to be random stuff where people use our hashtag um, that like doesn't really apply, but it's important to keep tabs on what's going on there. Um, we have to know what the conversation is around the words we're using. Yeah, and that's so important for our YES alumni because they all are in you know over 40 different countries around the world. But we do have these hashtags that bind us all together and will allow each one of you to be able to see what else is happening in other YES communities and maybe get ideas from other people. So I just want to always remind you all to use those hashtags, KLYES, YES alumni. And as um, you all know, it's International Education Week. So we have special IEW hashtags for you you all as well. Um, so this is just a really, really great way for you guys to stay connected is through those hashtags. And also there's the possibility to create hashtags for your own projects to build momentum for those. And David, do you think it's a good idea when you pair hashtags? Like for example, if someone was doing a gender equality project, they would hashtag gender equality, but then they could also hashtag, of course, K-O-Y-E-S or any of our other relevant hashtags, right? The more hashtags, the more exposure. Yeah, definitely. I think you don't want to look like you're spamming people by putting like every hashtag you can think of, but like you, said, <laughs> you have two to three to four, like as long as they're relevant, then you should absolutely be using them because other programs and other people are also following these hashtags and these keywords. Um, and when they see your content, I have faith it's going to be wonderful and they're going to want to engage with it and amplify it. Awesome. Um, yeah, and just a uh, time check. We do have 15 minutes left. So um, we'll just keep going okay, through. We're going to speed. We are going to speed. Everyone, <laughs> I'm going to talk so fast. Um, here we go. Okay, so the next thing is listen more than you talk. Something very difficult for me to remember. Um, but this is just like a screenshot of a basic social listening report. The exciting thing about social listening is we can really understand this is like a broad overview of what's happening on social media. What is our audience talking about? How are they talking about it? And what I think is really fascinating is like, what does our audience's digital environment look and feel like? Are they stressed? Are people yelling? Are they turning to social media to relax? Are they turning to social media to have fun? That's so important because that's how we frame our conversation with them in ways that resonate with them. Um, also iterating and optimizing. So, Social media is an ongoing narrative. Allow yourself to experiment, allow yourself to grow and change. Um, I wanted to pull something really fun that I'll talk about in a minute, but you can see here in these smaller boxes are three different headline and photo tests um, for this article, horrifying article about this ginormous spider that I stupidly watched last night and could hardly sleep. Um, and you can see there are slight differences here, and then you can see what they ended up going with. Um, so pay attention to how people are doing that, and also let yourself do that on your own. So how do we leverage social media for our own channels, at David underscore Mani? One, I don't. So these are all lessons that I'm trying to teach myself, um, so I figured I'd share them with you. <laughs> um, we often follow people we like to like see what they're doing, or read what they're writing, blah, 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 blah. But I think it's important for us to follow people we want to talk to because social media gives us access to those people and it gives us something to talk about with those people, especially when we're talking about journalists and other people in social impact um, and other people working in similar causes with us. Like at the end of the day, we should be a community and 
So really follow the people that we want to um, like engage with. Uh, be gracious. Don't ever take all of the credit. Um, we're all on a team. All boats rise, as we say at Bad Council. Um, and so really make sure that you're showing like everyone who follows you and everyone you follow that you're there to support them as much as they're supporting you. And don't put too much pressure on yourself. If you want to post a blurry photo, it's not the most beautiful thing in the world, just post it. Like at the end of the day, we're all living our lives. We're all busy. Like we can't all be perfect Insta models unless you love that. Some people find a lot of joy in curating the most perfect Instagram feed and like more power to them. I love following them. Um, and learn from others. Uh, we'll see in a minute, like Facebook has now added so much transparency to their ads. Like we can look in there, look at people who have, who are doing the work you want to do and dive into what they're posting and reading. Um, there's so much we can glean from people. Um, okay. So this is about the transparency. So here I showed you a few ways just on Facebook alone. Um, you can look at what other causes and nonprofits are doing, um, especially when it comes to the paid space. So Here's a Facebook ad I was served. Um, yes, I love this. That's what exchange means, to learn something new every day. That's beautiful. Um, okay, so let's say you're served an ad, and it is an issue ad, which most of the ads we care about are going to be issue ads. We can hover over this little eye here, and it'll give us information as to who is promoting this. We can also click on these three dots up here and click why am I seeing this? And you'll see why you specifically were targeted. Now I think this is interesting because here I was targeted because I have visited their website or used one of their apps. Other ads I get targeted with, it says you are targeted because you are a male living in New York City between the ages of 20 to 25. Um, and that's interesting. How are people targeting us and why are they talking, targeting us with that? Um, and then also there is now an ads archive for any issue ads. And here's the link to it. I can send that around. I'll actually just type it right now. Um, ads slash archive. Now this lets you dive into every single ad since May of 2018, I think, or 2017 from political and social issues. You can learn so much from scrolling through there, segmenting it by which issues you care about. Um, segmenting it by the, um, the platforms and outlets you follow to really understand how are they framing things, what are they promoting, et cetera. Um, and then you can go and look at a specific company's or organization's ads by going to their homepage and clicking info and ads, and you can just scroll through every active ad. Um, okay, I'm going to keep moving on because we still have more to cover. Um, so shifting from awareness to action. If we can't do this, what is the purpose of our role? So this is extremely important. Um, and that really means taking people from the first step of, oh, I've heard of that before, to the next step of, no, I love that, to the next step of, this is the best thing on the planet. Hey, friend, you've got to get involved with that. Um, and we have a huge role to play with that in social media. Um, but three really tangible ways we can do that are one, show people what action actually looks like. Two, give people the space and opportunity to take action. It takes time. It could take days, months, years, uh, but they need time for these things to fester. And three, thank them, appreciate them for their action. Um, so three or two examples of that from different campaigns. One, back to Meals on Wheels. Um, we wanted to hear personal stories of Meals on Wheels volunteers to show the world what it means to be a volunteer. So we started a hashtag, hashtag what I got for lunch. Um, and we encouraged people to post about their volunteering experiences, email them to us, submit them via a form, and then we would post them on Meals on Wheels social channels. Now, I'll be totally honest, it took a bit of time to get this off the ground. You'll even see here, I included this for, as encouragement. I, one time I had to post a photo of myself delivering meals because I just needed people to know that this was something that everyone could do. Nobody knows I'm running the channels. You've got to use what you've got in social media. And so we started with this, some other people we knew, and then stuff started trickling in, streaming in as we were engaging people. So this guy, Sunil, he enjoyed volunteering for Meals on Wheels. We started talking to him. He submitted a photo. We got to post about him and it really showed people. It took them to that funnel of, okay, I did this. Oh, now I get a, talk about it. Now Meals on Wheels is thanking me for it. And then we got to show other people what that looks like to volunteer. Um, speeding along, 
Um, Dear Evan Hansen again, if you can't tell, I love Meals on Wheels and Dear Evan Hansen. Um, so early in the show's life, we saw fans recording covers of some of the songs and we wanted more because they were beautiful, they were wonderful, and we love our fans on that show. And so we started posting these videos they were making because they were really good. Um, and the show, even though I don't work on it anymore, is still posting these videos and the amount being recorded are unbelievable. And the same goes with fan art. People are drawing pictures of um, different scenes in the show, different characters. And so at one point, the producer decided to make an entire music video only using fan art. And I'll send that link around too. That's right here. Um, and that kind of intersects with like showing our core audience we love them and showing them what it means to be a fan. Right. And the fact that we don't always need to generate our own content and sometimes other people's voices can be more powerful. So for example, if Yes alumni are working on a project, maybe you want to ask one of the beneficiaries to, to post a photo or tell, talk about what that what impact that project had on them. Or if you're an on-program student or a Yes Abroad student, maybe you ask your host mom or host siblings to, for a quote or a short video clip saying what it means for them to be involved in international education exchange. Remember to be creative and pull in other voices into your own social media accounts. Yes, other voices are the best. Um, so a few quick things on my mind for tomorrow. Not actually November 16th, but the future. Um, Chatbots are, yes, you've probably heard a lot of people talking about them, seeing them being used. I think there's a huge capability for increased accessibility with chatbots and accessibility in the realms of like, I don't know if any of you have ever tried to get health insurance in the US, but it's an absolute crazy process that is so convoluted and difficult. Um, if there were chatbots that let people just kind of talk through what they needed, hi, I'm a male, 25 years old, relatively healthy, um, I don't go to the doctor often, and the chatbot helped you sort through all the information, that makes health so accessible for people. Um, IRL events, as you saw with the social lounge, as you're seeing with so many different things like 29 rooms and any awards show, Things that happen in real life translate to major digital moments. And so we really need to focus on what are we doing in people's real lives um, that can then give them content to talk about us, essentially, and our causes. Um, there's a lot more comfort with branded content. People are not so afraid um, of seeing a video that asks them to do something, especially when it comes to a cause. And so do not be afraid to say, sign up to volunteer, donate your clothes to Goodwill, um, like we've got to be telling people um, what to do because they're getting a lot more comfortable with it now. Um, community groups. I'm sure you've seen a lot of Facebook groups take foot recently. Um, and I think they're just going to continue to grow because it's a place where uh, people with similar interests can really go and have relatively um, untouched conversation with each other. And as advocates and as activists, um, these are really great places for us to listen and for us to get ideas and to participate in more conversations. And gaming. Gaming is an industry that is relatively untouched by social good. And I think especially with live streams on Twitch, um, some stuff that we're exploring here at the Ad Council um, in the mental health space specifically, there can be a lot um, to work on there. And so that's all I have. Really quick, I wanted to let you know, we can send this around. I hate when people presenting on webinars don't actually talk about what the description of the webinar said. Um, so I pulled out the different um, items from the webinar description and they're bolded here and then answered those questions so that you can always reference if you ever have any questions. And always feel free to email me um, if you have any thoughts, questions, ideas, wanna bounce something off of me. I just think by joining this, you're probably all such incredible people who have such passion for the world. Um, and so I'd love to talk and that's it. Thank you. Um, we had a couple questions come in. Yeah. Do you have a few minutes to answer them Absolutely. or do you have a time? Okay, great. So we had a question about fundraising. Um, we, it says, I know some yes students might be interested in using social media to do some fundraising for projects. Do you have any tips for that? Yes, definitely. Um, one, 
that I mean, Facebook has become so incredible for fundraising now because I'm sure you've seen all the like essentially plugins they have for fundraising. You can fundraise directly on your Facebook. You can put fundraising ads out there. You can fundraise in the middle of live streams. Um, there's also, like I mentioned, Twitch earlier, you can fundraise in Twitch streams. So if you reach out to some gamers who are doing their own live streams, um, see if they will actively fundraise for you. Um, and I think just finding ways to integrate into content and activities that are already happening gives you a platform already that you can then go in and layer in your fundraising asks. Wonderful, thanks. And what about graphics? Can you talk uh, um, quickly about like the best images to use or infographics? Because I, um, I know that a lot of times if a post doesn't have a, a image that pulls you in and captures you, then it kind of just gets lost in the avalanche of a news feed. So what advice do you have for graphics, especially in that lens of fundraising? Yes, so that truly all depends on your audience. Um, I work on some campaigns and accounts where our audience hates text on Instagram. And if there's text on an Instagram post, they will not engage with it, they will not see it. So we do not post images with text on them. Um, that will all be in the body. Whereas on Facebook, they love when there's um, text on the image. So really you have to like iterate and optimize with your own audience because it's never the same for every audience and it's never the same across every platform. But essentially making sure that you are always keeping your audience in mind and doing what's most helpful for them to get the information in front of them um, will work. I know that's not super helpful, but there's also a lot of resources to make great graphics, um, like programs like Canva, which essentially is like a super easy Photoshop um, that you can put a, together a bunch of graphics. Awesome. Okay, we have two more questions in the in the chat box. Um, <laughs> and Zarin from Bangladesh says, I love Canva. Yes, Canva's the best. <laughs> And so does Rachel, one of our partners at Amit East. So we have a question. When you are trying to join a conversation or reach out to other social media accounts, I think this was um, in response to when you said, you know, follow people that you want to talk to, not this that you want to see. Yeah. Um, what strategies can you share? So I think the overarching strategy is I kind of always imagine social media like a big giant party that I'm at. And I try to approach the way I talk to people on social media like that. So a lot of people on social media, since you're kind of behind a screen, will like hound other people. Like constantly DMing them, constantly reminding them like over and over and over with the same information. And like, if you did that to someone at a party, would they talk to you? Probably not, <laughs> but like, just to be honest. But if you went up to them and were like, hey, I noticed you do this and I work on this. Like, I'd love to pick your brain. And like, really just treat it like a conversation. And I think the same goes if you're reaching out via email to do a partnership um, or if you're engaging with content that they're posting. Like, if they post something cool, let them know why it's cool. Um, let them know what else you're doing that might ladder up to it. It's a conversation. It's a two-way street. Um, and the more human we make it, the more um, successful it is, I think. And then we had another great question on here um, from Umang Jasani. It says, how do you create content that has a lasting impact? A lot of times when we talk about an issue, we forget about it after a while. Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. I think if someone had found the turnkey way to do this, um, we would all be out of a job. Because, and I hate to say this, it truly depends on so many things about what makes something lasting. Um, what I think is important is not putting the pressure on how do I make this one graphic a lasting graphic that changes the world or how do I make this one video the one video that changes the name of, so, of senior hunger and instead focusing on like how is my day-to-day -day conversation making little strides and there will be things along if you're always doing the best job you can there will be pieces of content along the way um, that really like strike a chord with your audience and you'll be shocked and you'll be like okay that's what they love we're gonna go with it and that's when it's really important to have systems in place to scale it up so I'll give a quick example um, on 
when I was working on Meals on Wheels, and we really took this approach. It was a day-to-day -day effort. It was not, okay, we're gonna put this video out and it's gonna change everything. Day-to-day, um, -day, week to week, month to month, and we were doing really great. And then, um, some of you might remember if you were in the US at the time, but about two years ago, it was announced in federal budget cuts here in the US that Meals on Wheels might be on the chopping block. I logged onto Twitter that morning to go do my daily community management, and we had already had thousands and thousands of mentions of our keywords. And I was like, what is going on? And, but we approached everything as normal. We retweeted people, we were talking with people. Um, and then we started noticing it was getting crazier and crazier. And then throughout 24 hours, we actually had 1 billion social mentions of Meals on Wheels. Um, but since we had a system in place to talk with these people and to amplify their voices and to know which voices we wanted to amplify and what content we wanted to amplify and what our voice was and what our structure was, we were able to leverage that and gain, I think we gained um, like uh, 60,000 followers in like a month from there. And that's not because of one thing we did. That's not because of um, one video we made. It was an external event that happened, but since we were ready, we were able to dive in and really grab hold of that moment in a way that supported our supporters. Amazing. Um, I think we have a lot of inspired people in this room. <laughs> Yay. Uh, does anyone have any last questions? If so, feel free to type them in. Um, but in the meantime, I just, I wanna um, remind everyone again that you know, social media is something that we use every single day, but we really can be harnessing it to make it to make it have a social impact in our societies, in our communities, and also around the world, and just share content, share ideas, and really start to mobilize together. Um, and you know, this week it's been International Education Week, and we've seen a lot, a lot of great posts. At International Education Week is all year round, right? We can always celebrate the benefits of international education and exchange. And you can really do that through social media by reaching out to other people, by following the right hashtags, by creating the right content, and by being bold and, and taking a risk and reaching out to people on social media using David's strategies of if you're at a party, you wouldn't just be like, hey, I like that. I like that. I like that. <laughs> you would actually say, I'm inspired by the work you do you know, can we collaborate or can you give me any advice? Um, so just remember that you can always use social media year round and in your day-to-day -day life and take those small steps to have a big impact. Um, okay, so, all right, people are just saying thank you. I think questions are probably winding down, but David, I just wanna thank you. Oh, we have another poll. Do you feel more prepared to create social change through social media? So if everyone could just answer that, and as those answers are coming in, um, I just want to thank you again, David, for, for joining us. This has been such an informative hour, and we're really grateful for you, um, and especially going over time. Uh, yes, this was amazing. I feel inspired by these questions, by this information. Yay, 107%. That's not even a real percent. I don't know how it gets over 100, Woo but... <laughs> that is so exciting. I'm screenshotting that. <laughs> um, and yes, I'll send around links to everything here. I'll send around all that um, so that the Yes program can share that with all of you on the webinar. And always feel free to reach out and let's change the world. Woohoo! Let's change it. Great. So thank you, everyone. We will be in touch with webinar participants and attendees um, with all of those links and then just of course, the wrap up for the, the cheat sheet. Thanks so much for including that, David. Um, and we hope that, that after the knowledge you received today, we see more alumni use social media to promote your projects, to share your impact stories, and just to continue that um, the yes mission of creating international exchange and cultural exchange, celebrating our differences and our similarities. Um, so if you miss this recording, we will have it on our YouTube channel and on our Facebook. You can find us on our, web, on our website. Um, and don't forget, you can always read more about what's happening on the YES program or submit your own story and articles at yesprogram.org. Don't forget to follow us on our own social media accounts, Facebook, Youth Exchange and Study, Instagram, yes.program, and Twitter, yes Program News. So thank you. Thank you, everyone. And we will be in touch soon.
Bye. Thanks, David.